looking for magic cards head over to flipsidegaming.com and use promo code six for 10 percent off on orders over ten dollars it's a good deal helps with the show today's video is also sponsored to you, brought to you sponsored sponsored to you by uh my twitter account check me out on twitter i say fun things sometimes what's up planeswalkers there six back with some more ikoria set review uh set <laughs> set previews i am not reviewing sets uh well i guess i kind of i'm giving my thoughts i guess it's a review we're going to hop into it. Uh, today's a, a bit of a shorter day. Um, we are nearing the end of the spoiler season. Tomorrow is going to be the last dump. And I will say, I appreciate the fact that Wizards did keep some cards to the very last day. Because often, the very last day is just a bunch of, like, comments and uncommons that no one gives a crap about. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. That limited players give a crap about. Um, not to say that they're nobody. <laughs> this time, we have extra stuff. Um... Whatever. Think about dragons is a four mana enchantment. It is one blue, red, white. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. I mean, yeah, that that is that is a, a fine card. Only works with non-creatures, but still, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I could see this as being some sort of engine in a historic counter burn deck, perhaps. Because that deck does sometimes just, like, run out of steam. And I said steam, not gas. Because it's usually both blue and red. Just saying. Um, no, I, I mean, I like it. It's, it's very much like a, this is a rare enchantment. Seems seems good. Slithery Sneak is a blue, black, black, elemental nightwear, 3-2, with flash. But it doesn't end there. Whenever you cast another spell with flash, you draw a card, and each opponent loses one life. I'm not going to lie to you. When I first read this card, as in before literally just now, I thought this said, you draw a card and you lose one life. No. Not only are they getting to draw a card, but we are the ones who have to lose the life. I hate how much Wizard is supporting flash right now. It's just so fucking annoying to play against. Oh, I hate it so much. Um, I mean, the card's good. I would not be surprised if this card saw play in a Sultai Flash deck. The double black requirement is super iffy. However, I don't know if it's going to be as much of a problem as it would have been in some other situations. But we will get to those. We will get to those. Uh, Snare Tactician. 3 mana, 2, 3. Whenever you cycle a card, tap target creature your opponent controls. It's decent and limited. Regal Leosaur. This was uh, Vince, a.k.a. Pleasant Kenobi's um, spoiler card. It's a Boros 2-2. It's red and a white for a dinosaur cat. Plenty of those in this format. And this one looks fine. Uh, its buddy over here looks... Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, this creature has mutate one Boros Boros. Whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. For what it's worth, when I first read this card, I thought it said... Um, this creature gets plus two plus one until end of turn this this is a lot better um uh, it is other creatures so this doesn't get the benefit from itself mutating but for what it's worth the fact that you're getting a what is it inspiring charge um that you can do multiple times especially if you uh, mutate one of these onto itself or onto another one of these technically uh then you can get some really ridiculous stuff going on uh, I, I think this card is decent, especially considering, like, if, if you're playing a Boros Tokens deck, right, um, you can mutate this onto one of your um, better creatures, maybe one that you, I mean, easiest things that come to mind are the three mana goblins, um, Krenko and Legion Warboss, right, you can mutate onto this, and then you have just uh, your tokens being able to actually attack in and, and get some serious damage through. So I, I definitely think um, this card has potential in Constructed. Uh, whether or not we'll see a deck that can fully take advantage of it or not, I, I, we'll see. <sighs> Part of your world. This is... Um... Darn. I, we know the name of this card. I just don't remember what it is. Um, but essentially, this is the ultimatum for Jeskai. It's blue, blue, red, 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 white, white. Target player gains five life. Part of your world. Deals five damage to any target. And you draw five cards. So there, so we're gonna we're gonna go to the ultimatums again. I feel like I talked about this card already. Oh, it's not here yet. 
All right, then I definitely didn't talk about this card already. Right? Did I? I don't know if I did. Maybe I did. Who knows? I don't care. The thing about this card is that it's like just worse than Cruel Ultimatum, right? Like Cruel Ultimatum, you gain five, your opponent loses five. Okay, that's a 10 life swing. You draw three. So that's, that's fewer than five. Do not get me wrong. That is fewer than five. Your opponent discards three. You're not drawing six, but this is a six card swing, potentially. Your opponent technically could have fewer than three cards, whatever. This is a potential six card swing. What about the damage? You can't deal damage. Sure, your opponent sacrifices a creature. They might not have any good creatures worth sacrificing, or they might have plenty of good creatures, but a bunch of tokens, whatever. But then you get a creature card from a graveyard to your hand. So, you know, that's kind of sort of equivalent. Um, cool ultimatum, strunk. This is just strong. Five life is essentially worthless, right? Like obviously in the deck that this wants to be in, the five life is going to help. But would it have been broken to be like target player gains seven, seven life, part of your world deals six damage to, target, to any target, and then you draw five? Like if that, even if that is, I, I, I just I don't know why they think that five life is like this if you look at this and compare it to this one this one and this one they don't seem similar at all maybe maybe it's just because i'm not a, a just guy person um like the, the thing is this seems like it'll see play in standard anyway five life doesn't doesn't feel like this fe this feels like a card that just says deal five damage to any target and draw five cards because <laughs> the five life is so in inconsequential once you get to seven i feel but maybe i'm just stupid and wrong winota join our forces she has um a turtle bear an armadillo bear i hope we get to see like what this card is because it looks like no it's like a wo wolf armadillo bear it, it looks interesting i want to i want to know what it is anyway she's a four mana four four human human whatchamacallit she's a warrior uh whenever a non-human creature you control attacks look at the top six cards of your library you may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking it gains indestructible until end of turn put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library in any order uh this would be pretty interesting in some sort of brawl deck i think um in standard I don't know, you can probably play this in some sort of just like general red white aggressive deck that you know like you run goblins like legion war boss um but you also run certain cards like 10th district legionnaire um maybe boris the boris swift blade is, is even fine in that deck i don't know um oh this says whenever a non-human creature you control attacks This does not say whenever one or more. So if you have Winota, and then you have two goblin tokens, and you attack with those two goblin tokens, you have two triggers. Top six cards. In there. Hmm. I, this card is a powerful card if you can build the deck properly. Whether or not you can build the deck properly, I do not know. Kanan, Bonder Prodigy, is a Simic. It's a green-blue for a 2-2 human druid. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. Five green-blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Wizards of the Coast. Stop printing insanely strong Simic cards. Even if this card is not good in standard, this card is busted in so many places. So many. Um, for one, it is, I think it's Basalt Monolith. Bus. Yeah. Yeah. So 
see, you have you have this person on turn two. Then on turn three, you play Basalt Model. Uh, it, it, it comes in untapped. You tap it to add three, except this person gives you one additional colorless. So you have four total colorless. Pay three that colorless to make this untap. You have one colorless. You then tap it again. You get three plus one. That's five. That's more than last time. And you keep doing this until you have infinite colorless mana. Um, This is legal in Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. Excuse me, what? If this card gets banned because of this card's sins, I'm going to be sad. Wizards, stop making stupid shit in Simic. This card is redonkulous. Vulpaki, uh, this is a this is a bird. This is a bird fox. I really like the composition of this art, but I will say, the bee in this looks utterly horrifying. I think it's supposed to be a humming bee. It's like a hummingbird and a bee at the same time. Terrifying. Uh, this will be in my nightmares uh, until the end of time. Vulpaki is a five five a four mana two three flying creature. Uh, has mutate of three. Whenever this creature mutates, put a plus one plus one counter on it. It's a common. It's decent to be honest. Four mana, two three flyer with uh, potential upside. I think is okay. Uh, depends on how big the flyers in this set are. And this seems like it's going to be battle cruiser, but this works okay with battle cruiser magic anyway. So it's fine. <sighs> Hooey! Unpredictable cyclone is a three red red enchantment. Has cycling two. That is actually good. It's, it's very strong. If a cycling ability of another non-land card <laughs> would cause you to draw a card, instead, exile a card from the top of your library until you exile a card that shows a card type with a cycled card. You may cast the card without paying its mana cost. Then, put the exiled cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of your library in any order. Now, by itself, right... This is this is a pretty decent card. You know, you you get to get value immediately. Since a lot of the cycling costs are pretty cheap, um, you're often going to get ahead in mana value. But if you build your deck in a certain way, um, you can more or less guarantee to get some crazy shit. <laughs> For example, a par exemple. Um, let's say, uh, I don't know, you play... Uh, some cards with cycling that are sorceries, right? The only other sorceries you play in the deck are, I don't know, the ultimate cycles? Oops, I literally just closed it. You play, I don't know, the ultimates? Um, so you have cyclers. The sorceries that are cyclers, right? Make them good, obviously, because you might hit those. Then you have sorceries that are these. And then the rest of your deck is just like instants, enchantments, creatures uh, that are meant to just like not make sure you don't die. And you get up to this... I add you cycle, and then sure, you might hit one of your other sorceries. It's probably going to be good anyway. If you don't, you get a fucking ultimatum. Uh, it's, it's bonkers. I love this card. Instead of exile cards, you may cast that card. For what it's worth, uh, do not try and play this with Teferi on the board. Uh, if your opponent has it, because Teferi ruins everything. Uh, and of course, don't play this if you have Fire's Invention in play. Because it it counts. <laughs> it, it counts. The fact that it has cycling as well means that you can play this in a, um, gosh, excuse me, in a control deck or a, a mid-range style like late game value deck. Um, and if you get it early, you can just get rid of it uh, to try and find some of your things that are meant to help you stay alive. Easy prey. <laughs> the definition of bite-sized threat or bite-sized treat depends on who you ask. So we got a little grung looking monstrosity here. We have some hunter who I guess is going to eat this. I wouldn't. Uh, and then we have a real hunter who's going to eat probably both of them. Um, Easy Prey is a black instant, one in a black. Has cycling two, not bad. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost two or less. This card is actually pretty decent. Um, I don't know if I'll be playing it over the other instant black kill spell. But the fact that it has cycling means that it's not dead in control mirrors. Um, and I think that's super important, being able to have a card that is strong in the early game where you'll need it against aggro decks while not being an entirely dead card in matches where you don't need it. You know, if you're playing against a mid-range deck that isn't running um, 
uh, mana dorks, some some green based mid range decks will often be running mana dorks, so you still have some hits there. Um, but if you're running if you're running against a uh, mid range deck that uses early game removal um, and like enchantments and stuff for the early game, and then mid to late game is when they start getting their creatures online, uh, then this card's kind of dead. Except that you can cycle it. So I do love this card, whether or not it's going to see play in conjunction with or uh, instead of the other black removal spell, I do not know. Now we get. <laughs> To the PS, the resistance. This is the rare land cycle. I'll show you what it normally looks like. This is the rare land cycle in Ikoria. This is a land plains swamp forest. This land has three, count them three, basic land types. Which means if you're searching for a card with a basic land type or uh just a specifically swamp or forest or plains you can find this now what's the drawback because that's insane uh the drawback is it enters tapped always yeah that seems fine uh oh by the way this has cycling three so these are called the, the people are calling these the tricycle lands um, we have bicycle lands speaking of which i'm gonna go ahead and uh, go over to irrigated uh, farmland so i can show you how irritated i am this this right here, right? This right here is a cycle that they didn't finish. We only have the allied colored versions. And instead of giving us the enemy colored versions, they give us the tricycles. And now I understand these are technically just like worse than the tricycle lands. Which is very fucking annoying to say. Um, you know, they, it's not like they have a, a high cost. You know, it's a, a dollar to get these normally. Um, but I don't like when I do, when, when cycles just aren't complete. It really bothers me. Um, especially in a standard context. Like, I want to be able to play... Like, I, I'm shafted for choosing to play Grixis, right? Um, my Jeskai friends... Have a Jeskai one, which I'll, I'll pull up in a second, but I want to rant on the Abzan one because this is the one I'm probably going to be playing most. Um, I, I'm shafted because I'm playing Grixis. We might, because I think I think we're going to Zendikar next. Yeah, I want to say Zendikar is directly after this set. Um, so maybe we'll see the other ones there, which I'm hoping um, that'll be the case. For what it's worth, we are not getting fetch lines reprinted in Zendikar. Like, I I don't know if we know that for certain, but I'm... I, I'm like 98% sure that Wizards has said something along the lines of like fetches are not being reprinted in Zendikar. Um, at least not standard in a standard legal way. Um, so it's very possible we'll see them there. If they do that, I'll be super appreciative because dang it, I want to play Grixis. Um, but yeah, I, it, it, these are just better than the um, the Trilands from Shards of Alara and Khans of Tarkir. And Spice Eight Rack said something on Twitter that I that I cannot agree more with. Rares should not be cards that are objectively more powerful than non-rares. Rares should be cards that do something more more complex, more um, novel, more intricate, um, maybe even just like bigger, right? But you shouldn't have cards that are just better than cards that already exist. Because they're rare. Um, I will say, I think um, Legend of Room Terror does this re relatively well. Um, there are plenty of uh, co commons and rares that are just as good, if not better, than many epics. Because the epics are meant to be epic. They're meant to do more complex things. They're meant to be more build around. And the commons are just the strong cards that you put in your deck. The rares are just strong cards that really help you towards a certain theme here like if you look at the og mythics from shards of alara those mythics to me felt like mythics they were these huge splashy cards that weren't necessarily oh these are just the best cards right and now we have cards that are like the best cards and i i got i got nothing like i 
I don't... The, I'm fine with these cards in a vacuum. I am dissatisfied in so many ways with these cards in context of the rest of the history of Magic and... And what other card games have done better in this space. Um, obviously, Wizards can't, like, erase uh, the past... But there's no reason to not start to change for the future. Whereas commons and rares in the same set aren't like shadowing each other. And and I'm I'm gonna bring this up because there's fewer I'm, like there's besides the the other lands, there's literally one other card to talk about. So I'm I'm taking the time because I can. Um this is vehicle. And it was from um Kaladesh. I don't remember which set in Kaladesh. But... Da, da, da. Do, 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 do. Oh, they're pretty close to each other, too. Cool. Sky Skiff is a common. 2 mana, 2, 3, flying, crew, 1. It is just worse than Smuggler's Copter. It's not strictly worse, because technically, um, Smuggler's Copter dies to things that care about three power, whereas um, Sky Skiff does not. But there's no reason <laughs> that this card is just worse than this card, besides the fact that this is a rare, this is a common, right? This does more. Make it crew for two. For what it's worth, this like is a great example because Smuggler's Copter was annoying in a lot of formats. Um, but you know, literally, that's that's the only change that had to occur. Make this crew for two. This is no longer strictly worse than, or sorry, not strictly, just worse than that. It is just frustrating to me that Wizards essentially is like, oh yeah, the the really good ones are just dumb. And for like, for example, Heart of Kieran doesn't feel doesn't feel just better than Sky Skiff. Yes, it still costs two. Yes, this is a 4-4, four, four, not a 2-3. And it has Vigilance. But one, the crew cost is triple of it. You know, you're adding two additional power, which technically isn't like really tripling. But, you know, you're adding two additional power for literally two additional power. And you have this extra thing here. You may remove a loyalty counter from a Planeswalker rather than play the crew pay the crew cost so it's adding this extra bit of complexity it's adding this extra bit of difference here that makes me think you know it's it's kind of fine over here we have a, a similar but different situation so like wizards doesn't it's not like wizards always does this but when they do in my opinion it sucks fleetwood cruiser or fleet wheel cruiser is a four mana five three oval chase that dragster Literally very similar. They look very similar as well. Um, is a 4 mana 6 one. They both have trample and haste. This crew's 1. This crew's 2. This does get to attack immediately when it comes in. It does have more, a lot more toughness. But they don't feel just better. Right? For what it's worth, I, I, this is better than this. But it doesn't, it doesn't feel as egregious as something like this. this. Um, I just wanted to point out a specific example um obviously this card is just just better um than sandstep citadel and that bothers me uh so i'm just going to show you the other the other ones with the arts this is big ass forest swamp waters but the, the common art is just top notch um but we already said salt high I mean, Salt Eye right now is fine. You know, it's typically just blue, uh, blue green right now. I totally expect it to go Salt Eye. Um, and then, of course, we have potential for Salt Eye Flash. This works really nicely with the Checklands and Historic. <sighs> this one is the Mardu one, which... I mean, they look... They all look fantastic. Oh. Huh. I can't see it in this one, actually. So... No, I guess not. I thought I thought these were all going to be the um I thought these were all going to be the creatures in those colors like the the apexes, but apparently not. This is the normal one for 
the just kai they, they all look fan freaking tastic both both versions look absolutely stunning. Did Sam Burley do all of the other ones? No, I didn't think so. Notice tight. And they, they got like just a bunch of great people to do the normal ones though. And then the last one is Porky Parrot. It's the OGR. Four mana for a uh bird beast, a three-four. Uh, has mutate for three. Tap this creature deals X damage to any target where X is the number of times it's been mutated. Sure, it feels like a limited card, but one that has potential to get out of control. I just realized that this is uncomfortably humanoid in this version. Because, <laughs> like, here it looks like it has, like, paws. Here it has fucking hands. And <laughs> it's screaming at you. <laughs> I, I'm very uncomfortable now. I'm, gonna go, I'm just going to go back here to my, my happy place. And yes, the absent one's my happy place. So I, I really want to know what you all think about specifically these Trilands. Um, the Trilands, and then... Was it Sneak? Was Sneak the other one that I was like, I feel like this card's stupid? Oh, no, it's part of your world. I want to know what you feel about this ultimatum, and then the Trilands. Um, because I feel like the ultimatum is just, like, the worst of the ones we've seen so far. Um, and then I feel like these Trilands are dumb. Like, they're good! They're, like, fine. Like, I don't think this is gonna, like, be power creeped into modern or legacy um but i think in standard there's gonna be like constant played i guess i guess maybe that the format's fast but like cycling typically slows down the format in general but then like just in 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 commander is just like why would you not play these cards <laughs> like if you like the, these are just better options than the the normal trilands and I'm probably going to play them in my, my Chromat Planeswalker deck. But then I'll have half of them be Tri-Lands and half of them be the Cycle Lands, the Tri-Cycles. I don't know. Maybe I'm, just, maybe I'm just insane. Maybe I'm just insane. I'd like to thank my lovely patrons for the continued support. If you'd like to join them and support the show, you can find links to that down in the description below. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, this is, These are crazy times. Tomorrow uh, we get all the stuff. And until then, I will be one.